Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the CAS Virtual Showcase 2020 and this keynote talk by Dr. Lucy Rogers on creativity for non-creatives. My name is Beverly Clark and I'm the CAS National Community Manager. I'm also the moderator for this session. And I'm joining you from my home down here in the sunny Southwest. Shortly, I will introduce Lucy to you. But before I do, I've got a couple of reminders. In terms of housekeeping, during the session, please use the question window on the right-hand side of your screen if you have any questions, which we will answer later on in the day across our social media platforms. The top of the window has an orange rectangle, which can be expanded or collapsed. There are also some handouts, there's a handout in the, on that side also, on the right-hand side, below the question bar. I'll be making a note of all the questions asked during the session today. The hashtag for everything to do with the showcase is hashtag CASVirtual20. As a reminder, everyone is in listen-only mode. So please let me introduce Lucy. Professor Lucy Rogers is an inventor with a sense of fun. She is a Royal Academy of Engineers Visiting Professor of Engineering, Creativity and Communication at Brunel University, London, a Fellow of the Institute of Mechanical Engineers, and she's adept at bringing ideas to life, from robot dinosaurs to mini mannequins. She's the presenter of a couple of STEM podcasts, and before shutdown, was sought after as an awards host and MC of events, and also as an inventor on TV and radio. And I know she's very, very excited to deliver this session for us here in the CAS Virtual Showcase. So over to you, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you, Beverly. And welcome, everybody. Are you like me? And I've got a message come up that I need to grant access to let you record. So I'm just going to uh, grant that access. Um, and hopefully that works. Oh, and that one. Okay, let's hope that works. Are you like me and not naturally creative? And if, you're, if you are naturally creative, maybe you know others who aren't. Well, today I'm going to share with you my top three tricks for being more creative. Now, I'm an engineer by training, mechanical engineering, and I recently did a personality test. One of these things that you do online and it says, are you more likely to have a messy sock drawer or a tin of pineapples in your cupboard? To be fair, I should have known then. But the results of that said that I was very logical, I liked following the rules, but I really wasn't very creative. Well, how can I be not very creative when I am renowned for my creativity? I've made gold boots with lights in that you can tweet to change colour. I've made a fartometer that's been featured on the IBM uh, main website and also on Tomorrow's World. And I work with robot dinosaurs. So how can I be not creative and yet be renowned for these things? Well, that test was actually right. My natural tendency is to follow the rules, to keep going and don't break them. However, I also have a natural tendency to also eat chocolate. And we don't have to all do exactly what our tendencies try and tell us. So yes, I am logical, but I can also be creative. But what is creativity? When I was at school, I was led to believe that creativity was being able to paint, being able to draw, being able uh, to write a story. And that sort of limited and boxed in what creativity is. 
So I would like to redefine creativity. To me, creativity is the ability to imagine new things and to act on those thoughts. I'm going to repeat that. Creativity is the ability to imagine new things and act on those thoughts. Now, before you scribble all that down, don't worry, I've put it in the handout. I've put out my three top tips, I've put out some web links, um, and I've also put out that definition. Creativity isn't innate, though. It's not binary, you either have it or you don't have it. It's a skill, and as such, you can learn it, and you can train it, and you can get better. So now I'm going to share with you my top three tips for improving your creativity. First, permission is granted. How many times have you told yourself, oh, I can't do that, I, ha I haven't got the time, I should be doing something else, I should be mowing the lawn, I should be doing the washing up, whatever it is, I, can't, I haven't got time to be creative, I can't do that. Or, oh, I couldn't possibly have a go at that because, oh, my paintings are awful or this, I'm not as good as such and such and, oh, I'm not very good at it. Well, of course, unless you practice, you're not going to be very good. But when was the last time you gave yourself permission to watch a film? When was the last time you gave yourself permission to read a book? When was the last time you gave yourself permission to go on social media? Permission is granted to be creative. Now, the second, my second point is copy, copy and create. So it's all very well saying, oh, just practice being creative when you don't know where to start. You know, what do I do? Uh, um, I, I just don't know. So if you copy what you like, so I like the artwork of Escher, the, the stairs that go all the wrong ways, the hands that drawing itself. So I've had a go at copying some of them. I also really enjoy the Heath Robinson's work. And so I've had a go at that. And the Great Egg Race, some of you may remember that from the 70s and 80s, uh, where you had to propel a boiled egg well, probably wasn't boiled, a raw egg from one end of the room to the other using only the energy in a rubber band. And I've copied some of these things. You may see it in some of my work. And copying it gives you the muscles to practice, to do it, to try things. And yeah, I understand that copying uh, can be seen as fraudulent, it can be seen as plagiarism. I'm not suggesting any of that. I'm, <laughs> I am never going to be good enough to be able to fob my work off as a real Escher or a, a real Heath Robinson. I'm saying use their ideas and practice doing their stuff because the more you practice and if you pick more than one person thing to copy, the more your own personal voice will come out. And so because I copy all these things, I'm not going to be the next Escher. I'm not going to be the next Heath Robinson. I am the first Lucy Rogers. And I have my own voice and do my own style, but I have been influenced and these others have helped me. Copying is also something that I've uh, worked with, uh, with robot dinosaurs. So there's a theme park on the Isle of Wight. It's called Black Gang Chine. And they, in the 70s, had fiberglass dinosaurs airlifted in. And if you were a child in the 70s, you would have followed on Blue Peter the uh, making and the transportation of these dinosaurs. And they, they came in by helicopter. It was really an amazing uh, site. In 2012, they decided to upgrade these fiberglass dinosaurs to be robotic. 
So they got some robot dinosaurs in and just before the busy summer six, the summer holidays when 80% of the tourists would come into the park, the big T-Rex died. Now I say big, it's bigger than a double-decker bus. You have to go up this platform to actually get eye to eye to, eye to teeth with it. And they've managed to put in under this platform all these bass speakers. So when the dinosaur roars, the whole platform shakes and it really is rather scary. But the dinosaur had died and I got called in and asked, can you fix our dinosaur? So I put out a call to um, a load of the engineers, computing people that I know and said, look, we've got cake, we've got coffee, we've got robot dinosaurs. Who wants to come and help? Because I know how to incentivize an engineer. So all these engineers came across and we put in a Raspberry Pi inside the control box and it made the dinosaur work. So the, the Raspberry Pi uh, was, was used to control the dinosaur. Now, I assume most people have come across a Raspberry Pi, but if, if not, this is a Raspberry Pi. It's a 30 pound computer, thereabouts, and it was originally designed for education. Um, and now millions of these have been sold and only about a third are used in education, a third are used in industry and a third uh, are used by hobbyists. So that, that's a Raspberry Pi. But when we left uh, the park, and it's a small park, so most people multitask and you might be working on the rides one day and in the cafeteria the next, maybe doing some gardening the next. They didn't have a specific tech team. So I got together everyone who had an interest in technology and I started teaching them how to program the Raspberry Pi. And because no one had had much experience of programming, I taught them a visual flow programming language. So it's like Scratch, but it was actually called Node Red and it was designed by IBM people for IBM people. It was designed for computer uh, programmers as a shortcut instead of writing out a lot of code. So I've got a over there, I've got a Raspberry Pi. So I've got a Pi and these are the GPIO pins up along here. And I've got a little board that's got some traffic lights on it and that just pops on the end there. And so that's what I've got over there. That's the standalone computer system with, with the Pi. So that's what I've got. And I'm going to take you through just the, the first couple of steps of programming in Node Red. So if I can share my screen. Okay, hopefully we've got that. Have you also got a me in it? Um, yes, we have. Good, right. So, so hopefully we can still see the pie over there and we can see the screen that I've got here. So I'm going to take an inject node and I'm going to get that one out of the way. I'm going to take a debug node and I'm going to join the two together. And up here, there's a little bug and click on that. And so now if I click on my timestamp on, oops, sorry, no, I need to deploy it. I need to say, yep, that's the code I want. So now I deploy and you see this number comes up here. That is the timestamp. So it's today's date and time in a numerical format, not much use. So I double click on the timestamp, change it to a spring, a string, sorry. Uh, and type in hello world. I deploy it. And now I've got over here, it says hello world. That is my first program using Node-RED. 
So Node-RED, you can download. I've put the link in the handout. Um, it used to come straight on the Pi. It doesn't anymore. You can download it and install it on the Raspberry Pi. It's free to use. So now I want to talk to the Pi. Um, I'm sorry, I'm on the Pi. So this screen that I'm using, I've actually just mirrored the screen that's over there. Um, so we're working on that. So I scroll down to a Raspberry Pi GPIO pin out and connect the two. So as we said, these are the GPIO pins. Now I want to turn a light on or off in binary, we use one or zero. So I'm gonna change it to a string, put it to a one, uh, call it on, and I need to tell it which pin that I'm using because there's 40 pins and I know that the red pin is on pin 35 um, and I'm going to call that red. So don't worry uh, if you're not quite following along here, there's links in the handouts to some tutorials so you can actually do these for yourselves. I'm going to deploy and then turn the red on. So I'm hoping you can see that the red light has come on down there. I'm doing this a little blind because I can't now see me or anything else. There we go. So we've got about there a red light that's come on. So I can copy that and paste it, control C, control V. And <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. My dog is having nightmares. Enki, it's okay. She's yipping. Uh, I'm going to turn that to off and connect there. I need to deploy that. So now I can turn it on and I can turn it off. So that's the red light on and off. And I can do exactly the same. I can, if I make my screen a little bigger, I can move that there and there. So I can control C, copy that, control V, paste it, and control V, paste it again, because I want to change this one to the amber, which I know is on pin 33. This one to green pin 37. Whoops, I need to change the name as well. And deploy that. So now I have none of the pins on. I can turn the red on, the amber on, the green on, and I can turn them all off as well. So it's quite a simple piece of programming. And now I can actually put a change so I can have the red come on and then turn off um, and go to the green. So I'm going to I need a delay. There's a delay. So my on button, I'm going to turn on. I'm going to wait. I'm going to turn that down to three seconds. So what will happen is I'll press on and a number one will go to the red light and turn the red light on. But the number one will also come through the second path um, on this line and it will wait three seconds. After the three seconds, I'm going to turn it from a one to a zero. And then it can turn off. So I have got a one coming through, turns the, I'm going to just tidy that up slightly, sorry. The one, one, one comes through, um, turns the red light on. The one also waits for three seconds changes to a zero and turns the light off. So let's just see if that works. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and it turns off. So you can see from there that after that delay, I could 
if I get those there. That delay, I could turn the amber on after three seconds. So everything's off. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and then the amber comes on. So that is what I'm programming in Node Red. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Oh, I've paused it there. I didn't mean to pause. And let's go back to there. So have we now just got me again, Beverly, please? Or we share no, the screen? No, no and your screen is still being shared. Okay. Ah, I could use the stop sharing screen button. There we go. That would be better. <laughs> okay. So I went through that workshop with the staff at Black Gang Chine. So we just got some traffic lights. We turned the traffic lights on and off. Uh, I got them to do a sequence. And then one of the guys there, he bought in a little dinosaur. Dinosaur like this, um, we bought them from Maplin, 10 pounds each. And he said his children have got these. And so we actually hacked this. We have connected, instead of having the lights um, on the, on the um, Raspberry Pi, we connected this dinosaur with a little bit more electronics to the Raspberry Pi. And then we said, well, instead of clicking the button for on off, let's have it search for search Twitter for the tweet hashtag wake dino. So if uh, once it is all connected, you tweeted hashtag wake dino, the dinosaur would nod. And so this chap wanted to do it because his children had those dinosaurs up in their bedrooms and he wanted to be able to tweet them to say, come down to dinner, it's dinner time. So he'd tweet hashtag wake dino and the dino would nod and the children would come down to dinner. So they learned how to do, to take an input from um, a, a remote device. So their phone, um, it could have been anywhere on the internet, but then talked to that dinosaur. So this was all about five years ago. Come back to Black Gang last summer, and they said, oh, go and see what we've done to the dinosaur. So off I go, and I look in the control box, and there's the Raspberry Pi still. And on the cables that go up to the dinosaur that give the power to the motors, uh, they've got some current uh, monitoring clamps. So these are clamps that go over so this is the cable, they just go over the cable and they don't break it, they don't touch it, you can just put it in safely over the top and it will measure how much current is going through that cable and give the information back. So they've got that current monitor uh, system which is a couple of pounds connected to the Raspberry Pi and then they've got in the Pi limits so if too much or too little current is going through there up to the motors, they know that there is a problem to the on the motors. If it's, it could be um, overheating, it could be seized. And they don't usually find out this kind of information until either somebody walks around the park and says, "Oh, look!" If one of the one of the maintenance people walks around the park and says that dinosaur's not working properly, or a member of the public comes up and says, "Hey, your dinosaur's a bit poorly." But now, instead of sending a tweet to the dinosaur, the dinosaur sends a message via the Raspberry Pi, via this clamp, via the Raspberry Pi to the phones or, or the um, computers in the workshop that tells them that, hey, there's something wrong with the dinosaur. So they copied my workshop, they did the traffic lights, they copied the workshop that made the dinosaur work. And then they were able to take those things and create their own, um, their own solution to a problem that they had. So this is one of the things why I love the copy, copy, create, because it gives you those building blocks for actually jumping off into something in the future. So we've gone through, your permission is granted. We've gone through copy 
copy and create. And my third best tip for creativity is fail, learn and try. So we can see it in children all the time. You see a toddler doesn't you know, try and start walking and then fall on their bottom and say, well, I'm not going to do that again because I look silly or it hurt. They get up and they try again and they try again and they try again. Well, somewhere between toddler stage and grown up stage, we stop doing that. We we get too self-conscious we get embarrassed and oh I don't want people to see that I can't do this I encourage you to learn new things to try new things and to get that beginner's mindset back in so I've tried all sorts of things re recently and I have been trying things that really aren't me so when I was a, a small child, I would be climbing trees and playing with a penknife, and I'd be laughing at the girls who did ballet. So recently, I started to learn adult ballet. And actually, I quite liked it. I also tried to, um, other things. I tried to learn how to fly, fly an aeroplane. I discovered that I get airsick. I really didn't like that and I won't be doing it again. And currently I am learning TikTok. So something that I had assumed was for teenagers to sing and dance. I don't sing and dance, I'm not a teenager, but I have learned how to use TikTok and I'm really enjoying that. And it's so these putting myself in the beginner mindset don't mind if I make a fool of myself because why should I know already how to do some of these things? So these are really some of the steps that I have taken. So to conclude, we've got creativity is the ability to imagine new things and act on those things. Imagine new things and act on those things. We've also got the three points. Permission is granted, copy, copy, create, fail, learn and try. So I am sure that we have all been in the last few months learning new things and failing and trying. So sometimes we don't get a choice but try and grasp that. Thank you very much and I hope you have enjoyed learning about creativity for non-creatives. Thank you very much, Lucy. Just going to ensure that you all hear me. So hopefully everyone can hear me. Thank you very much. So my main points, I'm just going to reflect quickly and imagine new things and act on those new things. I'm a very great fan of that. Um, the, my takeaways today are the top three tips for creativity and hearing about Node Red and looking at how easy it is to introduce anyone to using the Raspberry Pi device. So please do take that away, implement it, try it, um, fail, learn and try. So really key points to take away today. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, so at the end of this session, there's going to be a short survey that's going to pop up on the screen. Please, if you can, take a minute and fill it in. Um, recordings of this webinar will be available in subsequent weeks. Look out for the link on the CAS website and across our social media platforms. Again, thank you very much for joining us for this first ever CAS virtual showcase and have a lovely day. <laughs>